And I don't know where you grew up, but I grew up in Niagara region. And back then, we put a lot of stock into the radio. It was the only way to find out about new music at the time. You youngsters are obviously looking at me and thinking, <laughs> not an old fart. But anyways, <laughs> back then, radio used to be divided into opera, classical, rock and roll, and pop. And that was it. Every station was one version of one of those four. Until in 1979, CFNY 102.1 came along and they rebranded themselves as the spirit of radio under the guise, under the guidance of rather my next guest, Mr. David Marsden, who is the spirit of radio. David, thank, thank you. you for joining me. Oh, it's my pleasure. David. I, I, I'm, I'm excited that you're excited. I am so excited. I can I, tell. I, you you can't fantastic. imagine. I'm going to try not to make an idiot out of myself. <laughs> Um, so tell me, what have you been doing since the Spirit of Radio last aired, and when was that? I left there uh, around 89, 1989. For young people, that's not like, well, when was that? That's right. Uh, Generations ago. Yeah, and then I went to Vancouver. I spent 10 years there, and then I came back here, and I started up Iceberg Media. And from there, I did a few other things, and recently, five years, within the past five years, I started up nythespirit.com, which is the NY is sort of CFNY, and the spirit is sort of the spirit of radio. Right. And uh, I don't, you know Rush wrote a song about us. Well, I remember the, uh, the outro, or the intro to this, your show, used to be the closing refrain of that's more, wow. than, that's more than I remember. <laughs> that, well, that was the last, the last bar of the spirit of radio. Yeah. And uh, do I remember that song? I mean, Rush is one of the bands that I, I grew up on. I think mm -hmm. it was the third concert I ever saw was the Farewell to Kings yes. tour of Rush mm -hmm. in uh, Buffalo, New York back in, God, I don't even want to try to remember, but let's just say that half the bands that I went on to live and love, and I say live, I actually quit school in grade 10 and traveled across the countryside following music concerts because really? music was my everything back then. Really? Wow. And yes, That's and <laughs> overindulging in psychedelics. So, I mean, we could go on and on about the evolution of radio, but um, specifically I was interested in talking to you today because uh, in Canada we have, now cannabis is legal, and the... You are kidding. <laughs> so I hear, I don't know why. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, wow. But the cannabis companies are prevented by law from uh, advertising in any overt way or yes. promoting anything to do with cannabis. Yes. And the cannabis companies uniformly are not exactly happy about that. No, I understand. And so, you know, some of us are trying to lobby the government to change its thinking because if we looked at California, competition is differentiated or at least possible because yes. advertising is possible. And yes. so from where you sit in a lifetime of advertising on the, in the radio format, how important is radio to a recreational brand that is associated with mind-altering experiences like cannabis? I don't think the radio that comes over the air is necessary. There's another way to do this. Unfortunately, I can't tell you what that is. <laughs> but there is another way to do this. It does involve music, and it does involve a worldwide, or at least Canada-wide, uh, description of what you're talking about. Hmm. It's like taking what was what the radio you remember so fondly and the radio that I've spent my life building and working in has now moved elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And people are are elsewhere with on any smart device. They're not listening to radio. They're listening to the web, the internet, if you will. Right. And so what I'm working on looks at the past, but primarily it looks to the future. Hmm. What's going to happen tomorrow? And maybe in a few months, I'll tell you the answer okay. to that question. Well, so we'll now be certainly staying tuned. But in your opinion, do you think that the uh, rules restricting advertising and promotion of cannabis, do they uh, seem to you to be a little bit excessive in their overarching suppression of any sort of form of advertising or promotion, especially relative to alcohol, which enjoys some ability? Uh, well, of course they're wrong, but when people in Ottawa or wherever they were, 
when they thought of cannabis, they thought of it as something they did when they were 17, and ooh, we can't talk about that. And then they said, well, we'll go ahead, we'll be the first country in the world to do this. But then they were nervous that little babies were gonna start smoking cannabis, can you imagine? <laughs> it would be in the formula. <laughs> Those are the babies I've heard squalling could use some cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> you must ride public transit. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, they were overcautious. Uh, in Ontario, they were even more overcautious. Mm -hmm. Just today or yesterday, they were handing out another load of people who won a, some kind of lottery to be able to have a store. Right. I don't, you know, to me, it should be out in the same way, at least, as the liquor control people are across our nation. Sure, that would be fair. Th those, those rules are somewhat antiquated. Mm -hmm. But if they were, if it, but you know, there are, there are ways of doing things that don't necessarily, you can work between the lines, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I can't say much more or they'll arrest me. <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't know any better. I'd say you're advocating for cannabis. No. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about ways that people can uh, approach this uh, alternatively. Um, in your experience, do you think that, I mean, and this is almost going to sound like a really uh, juvenile, pedantic question for somebody like you, but do you think that the music world is a natural place for cannabis advertisers to be promoting the positive side of cannabis. Did you ever smoke cannabis? Once or twice. When you were like 18 or 19 listening to CFNY? Oh yes, that's in fact why we listen to CFNY. Precisely the point. Cannabis and music are tied. They go hand in hand. They walk together. It used to be in the old days, you'd, you'd you know, do up a number, you'd, took a few and put away a joint or whatever the word was. And then the first thing you do is turn on your music, whether it be CFNY, whether it be your own albums, or today it could be nythespirit.com. Yeah, right. Okay, so tell me a bit more about nythespirit.com. How did you come up with that? Where does it reside? How do people listen to it? Well, it resides worldwide. Uh, we have servers across all of Canada. and. Uh, a friend of mine and myself, five years ago, we put this thing together, we built it, and it's a subscription-based model. You pay five ninety nine dollars a month, which is about 20 cents a day. Mm. We feed 24-7 stream, plus we have five DJs, six DJs counting myself, mm. uh, who put shows into the stream. And, uh, for example, you know, in the old CFNY days, we promised people that they could listen for 24 hours and not hear the same song. Yep. And if they caught us doing that, we'd give them money. Right. Well, at NMILthespirit.com, we've extended that. Now you can listen for 48 hours and not hear the same song. Hmm. One of the problems that old-fashioned radio has is they play the same 20 songs over and over and over, and it gets really dull. Right. So what? there's no question about the fact that we're a specialized service, just being a subscription service, we are. Yep. But if you love the music of the 80s, if you love the music of the 90s, if you love the new music today that no one else is playing, you have to come to nythespirit.com. Wow. Because okay. we are going forward so quickly with it. Yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. I remember that uh, so many of the new bands emerging in the 80s, well, that, that was an interesting time in music because it was really... Mm -hmm. I mean, rock and roll had a, had sort of evolved and started to fragment into mm -hmm. first it was I guess punk rock and then there was ska and then there was you know then there was the flock of seagulls this extreme new wave mm -hmm. ethereal sort of trancey stuff and then you know then the 80s brought on the rave scene and and you know it's now just gotten so fragmented that we have genres of music yeah. that people say are you into this kind of music and I say oh is that a new genre because I've never heard of it but you know one of the things that the internet has done is it has opened up Pandora's box. Now people know there's more than just top 40. You know, the, the old days where they played 40 songs over and over and over again. People are now, young people in particular, are, are going out and listening to all forms of music. And then they'll have a particular one. That, I mean, CFNY, when we started in 78 or 79, 
we were playing things like ACDC and Black Sabbath that no one else was playing. But once they, once those groups made it to mainstream, I'll call it, then we had to go, we were, we verged into punk and then ultimately new wave and et cetera. Mm -hmm. So my, my thinking is to gather all of this together. It makes a wonderful picture and an amazing sound. Your ears going, whoa, what's that? Yeah, no doubt. I haven't heard that before. No kidding. So with the fracturing of the global audience into all these different genres, and now it's so easy to broadcast your own radio station, mm -hmm. your playlist, mm -hmm. SoundCloud. I mean, it's become almost, I wouldn't say impossible to monetize radio because it's not radio anymore, as you said. Mm -hmm. um, but so, what is there? Is it still a viable medium for advertisers to, you know, reach an audience of a certain size? Are you speaking old-fashioned radio, or are you speaking the? Well, new, I'm talking new about radio. now, like the new radio. So, radio is not a good term. It's now yeah. a stream. So, yes. streamingly, but audiences, I find, are so fragmented that it's hard to develop a, a large audience in any single. Format. But that fragmentation is the, is the secret. You have to, you, it's not just one radio station. It's five, six, seven, ten, a hundred, doesn't matter, there's no limit. Because there are some people who want to hear nothing but jazz. That's a lecture. Somebody might want to hear a little bit of jazz mixed in with a little bit of rock, mixed in with a little bit of whatever. That's, that's part of the secret. Mm -hmm. Because as, as people have expanded, as people have grown up and become adults, successful adults like yourself, you're looking for more than just those 20 songs, aren't you? Oh yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, since CFNY and the spirit of radio, uh, I can't, I never play an album. I never, I, I don't like to DJ. I like to find a station mm -hmm. uh, on the internet that's mm -hmm. playing an eclectic mix of everything from you know, cowboy punk to yeah. jazz to... You just found it. It's called nythespirit.com. Well, I can't believe I had to have you come into the studio to find out about this, but I'm so glad I did. And uh, we're going to leave it there for now. there's more to come, let me yeah, tell you. Yeah, I know. Well, we're going to follow your story because I know what you're up to, and we're going to bring it to an, a wider audience, I, I like to think. I um, think so. David, thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to have you, you back soon. Pleasure's mine. You bet.